Welcome back. This is our last lesson in measures of position, which is helping us to know where a particular value lies within a general data set. So far, we've looked at quartiles, we've looked at percentiles, and today I'm gonna to introduce you to the very awesome and very important Z-score. So what is, it? What is a Z-score? Uh, it's also called the standard score, and it tells us where scores are relative to other scores. Let me show you what I mean. So uh, let's say we're at Pine Creek High School and they've just given the AP chemistry exam. The average score was a 2.78 with a standard deviation of 1.19. Joe Schmo scored a four. Good job, Joe. Now, how did he do compared to the others at Pine Creek who took the test? Hmm. Think about that just a second. Let's go over to Liberty High School where they also gave the AP chemistry exam. The average there was 2.56, and the standard deviation at Liberty was 1.78. Sally Sue's score was also four. How did Sally do compared to the others at Liberty who took the test? Okay, and then we can actually combine these two questions to ask a third question, which is which student did better relative to the students at their school? Okay, now I get to introduce the z-score to you. Okay, so look below. There's the formula for the z-score, which is x minus mu divided by sigma, or in other words, the value that you're interested in minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So let's check out Joe first and see what his z-score is. So we're going to take Joe's score of, of 4, subtract the average at Pine Creek, 2.78, divide it by the standard deviation of 1.19, and we get that Joe's z-score is 1.03, which means that he's 1.03 standard deviations above the mean. Good job, Joe. Okay, how did Sally do? We'll, we'll check out her z-score. So same process, 4 minus the average at Liberty, 2.56, divided by the standard deviation, and Sally's z-score is 0.81. So her, her score is 0.81 standard deviations above the mean. So who did better relative to their school? They both scored above the mean, but Joe scored farther above the mean than Sally did. Okay, let's try another example. Mike. Uh, Mike's a car salesman and he has sold a lot of cars. His average sale is $12,000, a standard deviation of $1,500. Jane has also sold a lot of cars. Her average sale is 11,500 with a standard deviation of 2,000. If they both sell their next car for $10,000, for whom would the sale be more unusual? Okay, so here we have Mike versus Jane. Let's take Mike's Z-score first. 10,000 minus his average of 12,000 divided by his standard deviation. He gets a z-score of negative 1.3. Let's try Jane. 10,000 minus her average of 11,500 divided by her standard deviation of 2,000 gives us a z-score of negative 0.75. So Mike's sale is 1.3 standard deviations below the mean, that's what that negative is, which is more unusual, he's farther below the mean than Jane's 0.75 standard deviations below the mean. Okay, that is a really quick overview of z-scores, just a little taste of everything you can do with them. For right now, just enjoy, just enjoy the beginning of learning how z-scores can give you some information about where a value lies within a particular data set. Thanks for being here.